Hello everyone and welcome to Nordic English Fighting. As you can see, we're just starting to deck out our studio a little bit and it's gonna be really nice, but we're not nearly done yet. Um, the fly we're gonna tie today is uh, a variant of the famous fly French Partridge. It's not really, it's 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 it's, a, it's an imitation of the Ephemera Danica. Uh, this is the male fly, I'll say. A little darker, a little smaller than, than the female. Um, but also often in, in bigger numbers. <clears throat> um, this is a fly I have created uh, from the French Partridge, I'll say, um, but the French Partridge feathers are really hard to come by, and especially in a decent quality. Um, I've used up all the one I had, and, and I don't want to buy a bag with 40 feathers where I can use six or seven feathers, because it's it's a fairly large feather for, for this uh, this type of, of uh, what do you call it, uh, fly tying, um, and, and, and for this pattern in particular. So what I've done is I've, I've kind of changed it to something a little more <laughs> easier to come by. And this is a 4B cape from Whiting, and it's just in a, in, in a natural color. And I think it has a really nice, you can see it actually has some speckles on there and some really nice markings. You can see that when, when we start tying. And I think it's a really, really nice substitute for, yeah, the original French partridge. You can use Danish partridge. You can use, yeah, just about any hen feathers. You can you can come by. The only criteria is that it's, it's, it 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 kind of have to be a feather with a with a fairly white profile and a fairly short feather because, yeah, it's 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 what's come closest to the original French partridge feather. But. Um, Anyway, here we go. This nice fly, let's tie the French partridge or the ephemera danica done male. <laughs> so we're gonna tie this French partridge variant the Infima Danica imitation and the first thing I'm gonna use is a hook and this is the Eric Setch or the FW531 in a size 8 um, and this is a barbless hook you know because this is catch and release fishing um, and the first thing I'm gonna use is is my white thread just the GSP thread you can use black if you want to it doesn't really matter um, I'm just gonna coat the hook lightly, just till like two millimeters behind the hook point, like so. And the first thing I'm gonna tie in is the tail fibers, and this is I'm gonna use a product that's called Moose Mane. I don't think we featured this on the channel before. It's what I've always been using for trying tying dry flies uh, in in the in the mayfly pattern because I think it's a wonderfully stiff material without being too stiff and it's black and it's durable and yeah. Approximately the same length as the hook. I choose three because this is an ephemera damica uh, imitation. They have three tail feathers, so that's the ephemera vulgata. Um, the smaller ones, Hebeginia sulfuria and uh, Bietzel rodani have two. So I'm just gonna try and approximate the length of the hook here. These are very long on the natural insect, so they go a little longer, it doesn't worry. Like so. Tying dry fries is one of the places where you really want to ease up on the fret windings because these are very small profile flies and it's easy to see if you have a bulk of tying thread in between. Um, the next thing I'm gonna tie in is the ribbing and this is what I'm gonna use to make that segmented body that you know from the insects. And I'm just gonna take some some, some thick black thread. This is a, a, a hundred DV boost. And I think it's really nice because it's very strong, very durable. And I'm just gonna take a long strain here and just gonna double it around my thread. And just place it down here. 
and put it on the side. So now I'm gonna start my dubbing process and I'm gonna use the super fine dub. And super fine dub is probably one of the most difficult dubs to work with because it's, as it says in the name, it's really, really fine. And um, I think one of the most used dry fly dubbings out there, they come in, in a variety of sets and bags and colors to match everything, every hatch. Because what's really sad about this insect is that it, it differs a lot from stream to stream, how dark it is, how light it is, how yellow it is, if it's a female, if it's a male. So it's, it's really nice to have some different colors to match these flies with. Um, and I'd say this, this variation I'm showing you now can cover like 90% of this fishing uh, in the done stage, but when, when, when you're getting a little later in the season, the, it, it's gonna be a little more difficult because they've seen so many of them and, and everything that just sticks out a little bit, being color, size, density, whatever. So anything that sticks out in the in, 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 in color and variation is it's gonna be harder and harder to catch fish fishing these flies. Um, but I'm gonna use the light creamy color here. And I'm just gonna take a good bundle of this. And the technique for using this is just starting out with like a like a big piece, just catching the edge of it and then just pulling it out. This is gonna be really hard to see on camera. I'm just gonna pull out a little bit at a time, just like cutting wool, actually, like making a wool strain. Um, because then I'm, I'm, I'm approximately sure that most of the fibers are in the same direction, and it's gonna make it a lot easier to to put on this dubbing. And this is really one of the dubbings where it's more true than ever, less is more. You can always put more on, but if you really overdo this, it's gonna be bulky and weird looking. I'm just gonna start small here. And I'm gonna apply this dub like four or five times before I have dubbed this hook. And it's just much easier than just putting all it all on at once. And now like two thirds of the way I'm gonna start applying a little bit more dubbing to make this tapered shape. But again, minuscule amounts here. Just gonna take it a little bit back here and tape it up again. I can live with that. And I'm going to put on my ribbing here and I'm just going to take the first turn, lift my tail and put it underneath. And this tension I'm using now is going to determine how much this tail is going to lift. I don't want it to lift that much because it's it's it going to look weird when, it, when the body isn't lifted as well. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tension and I'm going to start making these body segments. and. On the real insects, we have smaller segments near the tail here. And then it's gonna start opening up. There we go. I'm gonna make a dubbing loop now. 
Now we have to put in our C to C. And remember, uh, remember, just notice that I have a fairly big gap between where I am now and the hook eye because I have to make room for both the CDC and the hackle and the head. Um, so, yeah, be gentle about it. And the CMC I'm gonna use is just a, a what's it called? Blue Dun. I think it's a nice color, Blue Dun or. Um, or a light gray for for this hackle. It's it's supposed to mimic the um, what do you call it? The the markings on the wings. It's it's supposed to be the darker part of the ring. And yeah, I think it looks good. So I'm just gonna take two feathers. I'm gonna stack them up so the so the hackle um, what do you call it? The hackle stem. Is aligned with one another. I'm actually gonna take a third feather here just to make sure I have enough C to C. And you can see I always cut off the one side here. I'm just gonna take these and I'm gonna take my C to C clamp here. I'm just gonna insert it from the bottom all the way up as close to the hackle stems as I can can manage almost. Of course uh, you need room for, for cutting. I'm just gonna pull it away a little bit here to make it even, like so. And I'm just gonna take my scissor and cut it all the way down. This is so nice with a bigger scissor. I'm just gonna cut the hackle stem away here. So now I have my C to C in here. I'm just gonna place it into my dubbing loop. Close it up and let it go. I'm gonna take this CDC and just push it all the way up to the fly. Dubbing wheel, you know the drill. And don't be afraid to over crank this. I just, I don't want this going anywhere. So I'm just gonna give it, give it hell. There we go. And just taking a needle here. Don't use the brush because these fibers are very brittle and if I start brushing like this, I'm just gonna half all of them. I'm just gonna make sure I don't have any loops in here with the needle. I'm gonna take my heckle clam, put it on the loop and dismantle my, my spinner. Take the thread forward a little bit. And I'm just gonna, every turn I take about the C to C, I'm just gonna take my fingers and pull the fibers back so I have as much facing backwards as I, as I can and don't double it down. And this thread is really thin, so I can just almost put it on top of the, uh, of the, uh, the previous turn. But just as, as close as you can get this. There we go. Finish off that. Cut away the excess loop. Just pull it all back and just give it a few webs. So I have my foundation for my hackle. And the hackle I'm gonna use on this is just one of these 4B capes. It's just, just a natural color, so I think it's just called it's just called it's just called a variant. It's it's we we have a lot of these. It's just it's an, like natural colored brown. The original pattern, the French partridge dictator French partridge feather, but these feathers are not. It's it's difficult to obtain them, and if you obtain bags of them, you can maybe use like ten feathers in a bag or something for this fly uh, before you run out of decent sized feathers. Um, Use whatever you have at hand, I say. I, I haven't used French Patrick's feather for, for, for some years because I think you can get closer to the actual hatch using, you know, some, some natural colored feathers instead. And, and really anything, hen, hen capes, can be, can be used for this fly. Uh, as long as they have a pretty decent size, because that's the next thing. You can see I'm actually taking the feathers, the 
biggest feathers down here because I want I want like two or three turns of hackle, but I still want the hackle to to have some volume in this fly because that's what the the deal is here. I'm just gonna take this feather and pull back like that. I'm just gonna take my scissor and cut off this tip. Putting the blank side towards myself, I'm just gonna tie in this tiny triangle I just cut. Making sure that it's nice and it's firmly secured here, like so. And then I'm gonna take my Hackle clam, if I knew where it was. There it is. Just gotta take off some of this fluff, I'm not gonna use it anyway. There we go. Pulling my fibers back as I go. And I'm just gonna make here, I think four turns of this, maybe. Don't put it on top of the other. See those two. I'm gonna do four. Cut off the rest here, the excess. I'm pulling this back, I'm just gonna create a tiny head here. And there we go, French Patrick variant, and the original f is, is actually dictating uh, a palmer hackle on the body, and a, 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 what do you call it, a, a cock hackle in, uh, behind these softer hen hackles. And it works, it surely works, but I think the CDC is much more manageable, much more easy to fish with when this, when this fly gets drowned and they do when you're fishing. Um, you can just take out the, take out your, your amadou and just give it a, a squeeze or take a few blight cast and it's, it's ready for fishing again. And I think it's a really versatile pattern. You can, you can vary it infinitely. Tie a smaller version, maybe on a size 12 hook and you have a, a really nice um, Rodani uh, imitation. But yeah, there we go. So there we go, the finished fly. As you can see, it's kind of an easy pattern to tie. There's a little bit of fiddling with the CDC and take your time with that because you can really lose your mind and, be <laughs> and get mad about it. Um, but a fairly easy tie, fly to tie. Uh, as I said, don't be critical with the hackles. If you have something at home in a, let's say, lighter color, like I have this one, for example, um, you can just tie females instead. Um, or if you have the French Patrick, of course, by all means use that. I think the real gimmick in this is, is the CDC color in the back of the fly. That's, as I said in the video, it's gonna make it really easy to dry and you're gonna be really fast at, at casting again. Um, hence the other more traditional uh, uh, French Patrick fly has a lot of cock hackles and, and doesn't really have anything that's that's, that's stopping it from sucking up all the water. Um, so I think C2C is the way to go here. And you don't really need C2C of a great quality for this because you can just put another feather in it or just put them a little bit shifted and yeah, make do with what you got. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this and don't worry. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, for well, I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I hope you see you in the next one. Oh, and of course, all the materials and the, and the tying kit is down in the description. I'll see you in the next one and I forgot.
If you haven't seen it, go watch the video about this kind of fishing in Sweden we just did. It's really something. Bye.